Well, I got a real treat for you today. It's a Child's Play knockoff that answers the age-old question, what if we took Chucky and turned him into... I don't know, what's the female equivalent to Chucky? Charlene, maybe? You know what, it doesn't really matter since the doll's name here is just Dolly, because I guess using the old knockoff trick of naming the movie Lady Chucky would have been too easy. Dolly Dearest is a 1991 direct-to-video horror movie for anyone who saw Child's Play and wished that instead of an evil version of the My Buddy doll, we got a movie about an American girl doll killing people. Well, okay, technically this did get a very limited theatrical release in the Midwest, but let's be honest. Most people probably first became aware of this movie by seeing the VHS sitting on the video store shelf. It got a decent amount of hype for a mostly direct-to-video movie, though, even making the cover of Fangoria, which would put it in the same category as Spasms. Also, the movie's director, Maria Lise, had previously made her name directing pornographic films, which makes sense. I'm sure if you search the internet long enough, there's Rule 34 art of this thing somewhere. What, you don't believe me? Even the Child's Play series included a doll sex scene eventually. I guess you're right, movie. In 1991, Child's Play knockoffs hadn't quite become passe yet. This was before Pinocchio's Revenge. Here's one difference between this movie and the Child's Play series. Instead of voodoo, the possessed dolls in this movie are the result of ancient Mayan ghosts. Or possibly some effects from a direct-to-video Life Force sequel. Anyway, let's meet our main characters. Did you say something to me? No, that was a stewardess. Ah, oh, come on, Denise Crosby, you were in Eliminators! This is the Wade family, or Reed family, according to the end credits, even though everyone calls them Wade in the movie, who are currently flying to Mexico because they just bought a toy factory there. You see, this is why people had a problem with NAFTA. They don't make evil killer dolls in America anymore. So what's the toy company they bought anyway? Officially welcoming you and wishing you prosperity in the opening of the Dolly Dearest Manufacturing Company. Okay, I see this movie exists in a world where all successful toy companies only make one toy. Kind of like how Playmates only made a Michelangelo action figure. Because fuck you if you wanted to play as any of the other turtles. Oh well, at least they get to stay in a nice house. The place even comes with its own Chekhov's gun. It also has either a really big dollhouse or a really small guest house. Anyway, let's get a tour of that factory. We're here. Uh huh. Are you sure this place makes dolls and not meth? You know, I'm starting to see why this place only manufactures one toy. Mr. Australia, the appraisal documents indicated the factory had been kept up. You mean you didn't even look at this place before you bought it? That's on you, pal. Well, on the plus side, the factory's located next to an old abandoned mine. Maybe you can find some ancient Mayan artifacts and sell them on the black market. First, though, we gotta make some dolls. Look at that. Every little girl in the world is gonna want one of those. Nah, it's the early 90s, so they'll probably just want a dream phone. There you go, Jessica, your very own Dolly Dearest. You can put it in your room next to the creepy clown doll from Poltergeist. And holy crap, the doll's alive! Which should have been obvious to anybody who rented this from the video store. At least Jessica gets to play with her in the Dolly Malibu Dream House. The Dolly Malibu Dream House was a toy only rich kids had. Kind of like the G.I. Joe aircraft carrier. I will admit, this movie does have a few surprisingly creepy moments with the doll, although weirdly enough, it's still not as effective as Poltergeist just randomly stacking chairs. Wait a second, why do I keep comparing this to Poltergeist? This is a child's play knockoff. Jessica freaks out when the Wade's housekeeper has a Catholic priest bless the house. This family's devoutly Lutheran, damn it! What is the, the priest doing here? I call the priest to bless the house, it is custom. Yeah, 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 just do me a favor and put a mat that says bless this mess in front of the door instead, okay? Surprisingly enough, this does seem to have actually been shot in Mexico. Normally movies would just film in Vancouver and say it's Mexico. The dig site from the beginning is brought to the attention of Mexican professor Carl Resnick, played by Rip Torn. Now, if you're doubting whether or not Rip's character is supposed to be Mexican, he does put on an accent. Although, um, not really sure what kind. Bob Larrabee and I were friends for over 30 years, did you know that? Son, the sign up there says no passe. It means this entire area is off limits, so please, take a hike. It's at least 900 years old. The detail is amazing. Well, actually, they're portions of the damaged door. 
See, the details are exquisite. It's weird. Half the time he just talks the way he normally does, and the other half the time he almost sounds British. Oh well, Rip probably got paid in tequila for this movie, so that probably explains the inconsistency. Meanwhile, the dig site from the beginning is right next to the doll factory, and apparently in Mexico they just let kids randomly wander around important archaeological finds whenever the hell they want. Speaking of which, the ancient Mexican spirit possessing the doll apparently isn't a fan of Jesus. I guess it didn't appreciate Cortez pushing him on him so much. Jessica? Jessica, I saw that! Denise Crosby does not have time for this shit. She has an audition for a Marilyn Monroe biopic later that day. Now while in Child's Play, Andy tried to warn everyone about Chucky, here, Jessica seems to be completely on the doll's side. Holy crap, I think the doll might be haunted! Oh, great. This is just like when her baby laughs a lot when in a rampage and murdered her babysitter. And here's another important difference between this movie and Child's Play. Jesse. The voice of the doll isn't quite as memorable as Brad Dourif's. Oh well, at least Dolly has the power to remotely lock doors and make you forget where your spare keys are. Okay, we're half an hour in, so I suppose it's time we got to the movie's first murder scene. That is, if you don't count this guy from the beginning. Alright, movie managed to have a decent jump scare. I'll give it that. Eh, Camilla should be okay. Look, she even wore some protective knee pads. This is for saying Cabbage Patch kids are better than me, you bitch! The doll kills her by electrocuting her in the well that's in their basement for some reason. Although, unlike Chucky, she doesn't have any funny one-liners to go along with it, so I guess I'll have to add them myself. Presto! You dead! <laughs> Elliot is not gonna be happy about this. Aw oh, man, the maid is dead? Where the hell am I supposed to find another housekeeper in Mexico? In the early drafts of Child's Play, it was supposed to be ambiguous whether or not Andy was responsible for the murders. And if they revealed that the little girl here was killing everyone, I'd believe it. Well, there's only one solution to this situation. You gotta replace that dollhouse with a Technodrome playset as soon as possible. What did you do to your hair? We cut it. Don't I look like Dolly now? Yeah, that or a bootleg Drew Barrymore. While Jessica continues to fall under Dolly's spell, Rip Torn decides to investigate the dig site. Alright, there's gotta be some Jim Beam in this mine somewhere. And what the hell are you doing, kid? But on the other hand, I don't feel like stopping you, so I guess you can stick around. Even though this is a child's play knockoff, I keep expecting him to find a Hellraiser puzzle box in there. I just didn't want you to think that I couldn't handle the job, because I can't. I can handle the job. What job? Your assistant. Alright, kid. First order of business, make me a pina colada and don't skimp on the rum. Comprende? First, though, he's got to investigate the doll factory. These creatures are beautiful. Very haunting. Yes, they are. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be bestsellers. Resnick explains that the ruins aren't actually Mayan, but actually belong to an ancient tribe of Satanists called the Sanzia. So I guess the maid was right, this really is the work of El Diablo. You know, we're pretty far in and there hasn't been many kills so far, so better introduce some more potential victims. They say you join me for dinner, eh? You look very lovely tonight, eh? Of course, you look lovely every night. Uh, is this guy gonna try and fuck the doll? You come up to my room later, eh? <laughs> oh, shit, I think he is. You women, you're all alike, you know? But let me tell you something, you're ugly, and your nose is shiny, too. Alright, listen, even though you're talking to a doll, you're not exactly a prize yourself, pal. Here's another way this movie tries to stand out from Child's Play. Instead of just one possessed doll, the demon possesses multiple dolls. The Child's Play series wouldn't try that until Cult of Chucky. <coughs> oh, and there's cat scares in the movie, too. Well, at least they follow it up with a real scare. Here's a fun fact. The scenes where the doll is walking around were performed by Ed Gale, who also doubled for Chucky in Child's Play. Surprise! Once again, though, the voice of the doll is not as distinctive as Brad Dourif's. Not only that, but the kills aren't as memorable either. This guy gets his finger cut by a sewing machine and then just randomly dies of a heart attack. I think he was one seven-layer burrito from that happening anyway. And in case you thought that joke was too stereotypical, let's go back to Rip Torn, who considers this role so beneath him, he can't even be bothered to be a stereotype. The interior of the crypt is three meters by three by 2.5 in height. It doesn't appear that it's been entered 
It's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. And I'm totally Mexican. Faith and Bagara. And no one stopped the sun from hanging around the dig site, so might as well have him wander around the killer doll factory at night, too. Now we'll have some fun. Yeah, I don't think so. For a horror movie, the kill count here is not very high. Rip, on the other hand, seems pretty zooted. I'm looking for my son. He snuck out of the house. I thought he might be here with you. Jimmy, my assistant, the explorer. No, I haven't seen him. Ha! Did they just use the rehearsal take for all of Rip's scenes? If there's one bright spot to the possession, it's that the dolls seem to have more articulation than usual. That's it. I'm getting out of here. I don't know why he thinks that's so weird. A lot of toys from back then came with extreme tongue action. Alright, as much as I'm ragging on this, I do gotta admit, the evil doll effects are actually not bad for this kind of movie. Add a little stop motion and Charles Band would probably be proud to put his name on this. Even though we all know we're dealing with an evil doll, let's add some more backstory. Mr. Resnick mentioned that old tribe, and I read all about them. They tried to make, like, uh, an evil kid or something. An evil kid or something? Whatever, point is the dolls are possessed. Not only that, but I think your daughter's possessed too. I'll kill you if you try to separate us. I'll kill you if Either that or puberty is hitting her like a motherfucker. Despite all the death and weird shit going on, Elliot is still committed to making dolls. I want to get her out of here. I, I, I'm afraid for her. I want to take her back to LA. We've invested everything into this factory. We can't just pack up because our seven-year-old is having a tantrum. I had to take out a payday loan to buy this factory, and we are not abandoning it, goddammit! I think the real reason Denise Crosby wants to go back to L.A. is she just realized she quit Star Trek The Next Generation for this. Hopefully Rip Torn can help her out. I'm Marilyn Wade. Oh, happy to meet you, Senor Wade. I see your beauty in your son's face. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, stay away from my son from now on, please. So, Resnick explains that the Sanzia tried to create a child with the head of a goat that ate baby's blood? Again, the important thing is that this somehow led to possessed dolls. With science unable to explain things, Denise Crosby has no choice but to turn to the church. Do you speak English? It's a movie. Of course I speak English. Look, I don't know what to tell you here. Your daughter's got an evil doll that's slowly taking over her mind. Just say three Hail Marys and hope for the best. The spirit of the Sanzia Devil Child has been set free. It's too late. Listen to me. I am not losing my daughter to a goddamn 900-year-old goat head. All right, you know what? Props to Denise Crosby for delivering that line with a straight face. Rip's also here, too, mainly because when he heard this place could make holy water, he thought they were talking about the cocktail. All right, there's 15 minutes left, and so far there's only been two kill scenes. Three if you count whoever this guy was from the beginning. So what do you say we ramp things up for the climax? <laughs> doing in there fake out scaring you what does it look like again even though this is pretty lacking in the memorable kills department the effects on the doll are pretty effective for a direct-to-video movie and they even remember to give her a scarier voice what have you done with her she's in here with me she belongs to me you'll never get her back now we're together forever also your mother sucks cocks in hell that's it. Denise Crosby ain't playing around anymore. And what did I tell you about this being a Chekhov's gun? Too bad this place didn't come with a flamethrower above the fireplace. That'd really be effective. <laughs> Just kidding. Although she probably wishes she shot Jessica with what a little brat she's being. Okay, kid, time to kill the doll and deliver a one-liner. Play with this, <laughs> bitch. All right, not quite as good as Fuck You Lucky Charms, but still better than This Is The End, friend. All right, you killed the doll. But wait a second, didn't the spirit possess all the dolls in the factory? It's time to play. Well, it could be worse. Because it's the 90s, if the spirit had been next to a Beanie Baby factory, they'd be fucking everywhere. Meanwhile, I think Rip Torn's only still investigating the tomb to see if there's some ancient preserved wine in there. Nope, just a mummified goat boy. You could probably still use it for jerky, though. Even though we're now at the finale, if you were expecting the movie to ramp up the ridiculous death scenes, no such luck. It seems like we're about to get one with the father, but then Rip Torn comes in and rescues him at the last second. How the hell does this movie have several more killer dolls than a Child's Play movie, but only a fraction of the kills. I gotta get home. There's another one at the house. There's also a whole bunch of them in the factory. You might want to take care of them. Oh, hey, looks like they heard me. They're gonna blow the place up. Uh, I do love it when an easy paycheck comes together. I would ask where they got all this dynamite so quickly, but Sam Bottoms probably had some left over from his time in Nam. And again, if you were expecting any over-the-top kills... <laughs> Come on!
bastards. Nope, that's all we get. Okay, that's not quite true. They do kill the dolls. What the fuck? Alright, by blowing up the doll factory, you killed the evil spirit. I guess. Sure hope they got insurance on this place, otherwise they're gonna be screwed even without the killer dolls. Unlike other killer doll movies like Child's Play and Puppet Master, Dolly Dearest didn't get any sequels. Which is weird, since even demonic toys got some eventually. The biggest thing going against it is the pacing's a little on the slow side. Not only does it take a while to get going, but even when it does, there really isn't a lot of killer doll action here. Not counting the guy from the beginning, the dolls only kill two people in the entire movie. Actually, this guy technically died of a heart attack, so really it's just one. Still though, the doll effects aren't bad. And Rip Torn's an actor who manages to be entertaining, even when it's clear he doesn't give a shit. Fans of the killer doll genre might enjoy this one, but to me this is a case where the box cover is more memorable than the actual movie. Now having said that, I still think there's franchise potential here. We already got Freddy vs. Jason, why not Chucky vs. Dolly? Well, it's all for now. Until next time. Turkey manure. Turkey manure is the very best. Gives you the best crop. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that.